Welcome to Tech Trends. Tech Trends is a podcast series that provides perspective on the latest trends in technology, fintech, and digital. On today's special episode, my colleague Alton McDowell speaks with one of JP Morgan Chase's clients about how they're using technology to build their business. Enjoy. I'm Alton McDowell, co head of our commercial banking technology and disruptive commerce group here at JP Morgan Chase. And today I'm speaking to Steve Wynn, co founder and CEO of Dre Alliance a company whose mission is to transform the trucking and logistics industry. Steve, welcome to Tech Trends. Thank you, Alton. It's great to be here. We're excited. I think this is going to be a very interesting conversation, especially as we all have, I think, experienced a lot of issues around trucking and logistics. So let's get started. Tell us, tell us about Dre Alliance. What is it? How did you get started? I am super excited to share. Uh, our mission is to make container shipping uh, more predictable and efficient through digitization. So the way to think about our product and our service is that um, we deliver the last mile uh, delivery of shipping containers from the port to warehouses for large enterprises. Um, and another way to think about it is kind of like DoorDash for shipping containers instead of food. <laughs> um, the company started about four years ago with me and two co-founders uh, in the back of a warehouse um, Recently, you know, we've we've came a long way. Recently, we announced our forty million dollar Series B. We now have about one hundred twenty full time employees, um, and we help some of the largest brands that people know about and retailers to deliver their containers to warehouses. Very exciting. Tell me a little bit about uh, intermodal drayage, which is important, obviously, in terms of shipping goods and services short distances. Uh, what was that aha moment when you realized there was this ability to really modernize the effectiveness and efficiencies within the industry? I think about the aha moment being two smaller truths that combine together to reveal something bigger. Um, and it, it, in that framework, the truth number one that we know is container shipping is highly inefficient. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know is that uh, how inefficient it is. Uh, there are mm -hmm. multiple stakeholders involved to deliver every single shipping container. Um, and these stakeholders don't really talk to each other in a digital manner. Uh, all these information are passed through uh, throughout the world uh, in emails, faxes, and phone calls. Um, my background is I'm a first generation immigrant from China. Uh, when, we, when I came here with my family, my parents started a warehouse in California. I ended up growing up in a warehouse, helping out with my parents' business every day after school. Uh, so I've seen this in firsthand in multiple perspectives. The truth number two is that I majored in software engineering in college and started a number of startups projects. Um, you know, I'm not the typical Ivy League Stanford grad uh, that started a company in Silicon Valley. Uh, <laughs> what really happened was simply having uh, uh, engineering background and then noticing a big problem that I see. Um, and the biggest biggest thing is sort of really the combined knowledge of that and the customer obsession. Um, before I started Dray Alliance, I actually spent about two years running a traditional trucking company to learn more about this industry. Wow, I love, I love that story, especially the background of, you know, literally coming here, immigrant from China, that you're saying, kind of in a warehouse, understanding that. And I, although you study technology in college, we're not coming from a traditional kind of technology background, but obviously getting better at that from engineering. Tell me a little bit about the technology that you saw that you, you know, that you created for Dre Alliance. Like, what did you see from a tech perspective that said, I'm going to create this that will solve this particular problem in that in the industry? And how did you create this for your, cu your customers? Like, what did you see that they needed? Uh, I think it's important to think about the what the experience for a customer is today. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's think from the, cus the customer's perspective in, uh, in terms of an importer. So if, Alton, you're an importer, you're trying to bring a shipping container uh, from, let's say, somewhere in Asia all the way to the United States into your warehouse. Uh, in today, you need to find a freight forwarder, which are these agents have, that have relationships with local companies that help you find sources and trucking companies in China. 
uh, in Asia, wherever you're sourcing from, and then find a space on a ship, and then find another local firm uh, in the destination, which is, you know, let's use an example of LA. Uh, and all of that is coordinated over emails and phones uh, by relationships and networks. Yeah. What really is difficult is that to operate this system at scale. So if you are shipping one container, it's not that hard. You can you can manage right. that. But if you're right. shipping 4,000, 10,000 to the United States every single year, uh, it becomes a very fragmented process. And you would have different processes, pricing models, experiences at every single port that you ship to. Uh, what, what we try to do is to use a platform mindset and use software to really use numbers instead of local knowledge to bring those efficiencies out in the system. So our experience, instead of having manual processes and emails and relationships built in every step of the way, is we offer uh, we offer the same experience uh, for every single container that's shipped and use data to dispatch every single trucker to bring those containers at the right moment with the right equipment to the right warehouse for the shippers at scale. Uh, I think the key here is that transparency and scale and reliability can really only happen in today's world with data uh, and, and, and algorithms uh, because everything is moving uh, all the time. Yeah, I couldn't imagine trying to run a business and especially before your, your company came along, keeping track of every container and from all around the world for all these different products. And I feel like, especially as the world is becoming much more, I want goods and services now, faster, quicker, sooner from all over, it's never been more important to have a lot of insight into where, again, your container and the freight is. So it is, uh, it's quite interesting. Now, pressing on that thread a little bit, one thing that has been obvious during the pandemic is we have supply chain issues, we have supply chain bottlenecks. Um, I know personally during the pandemic, I probably, I uh, feel like I bought m so much more hand sanitizer <laughs> than I ever had. So I can only imagine the inventory control and management process with that. But what is also interesting is I think like everything else, there are always interesting lessons learned in these types of crises. So from your perspective, especially being very proximate to what's happening with the supply chain and freight forwarding, what were kind of the lessons learned from the pandemic from your perspective? I, I think is is important to go back to 2020 and think about what was the world before the pandemic. Our, our office is actually in next to the port of Long Beach in the city of Long Beach overlooking the ports. Long Beach is the biggest port in North America. And mm -hmm. usually the norm is no line at all. You would not see any ship lining <laughs> up. And right. throughout the last two years, that norm was broken. Uh, we would constantly see lines of container, giant container ships. Um, mm -hmm sometimes up to 60 to 80 of those just lining up all the way down the coast, sometimes into Mexico. Um, and that wow. is an image you don't forget about outside of your window. Um, I think what really changed is the pandemic accelerated the need for technology for everyone involved. Um, if we think about how innovation happens, usually it comes from the consumer world. Um, uh, there are good examples of Uber, DoorDash, many more. Um, and then there are other companies that are billion dollar companies now um, that deliver freight uh, to consumers and then deliver packages to consumers. Those are the last mile for consumers. But mm -hmm. what people often overlook is there's a much bigger world in the enterprise world where there are businesses that are backbone to the global economy that are still using software and processes from the 80s and 70s. Um, when, you, when you step into a shipper's office and you see black screens and people typing numbers, <laughs> there's no UI. Um, right. and, and that's you, when you know things are broken. I think that's when we, um, what we realized in, 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 in the last couple of years is really accelerated um, our effort in using the data we have gathered from different stakeholders the port terminals, the shippers, our, our mobile app for the, for the truckers locally, um, mm -hmm. to use all that information and find the most effective and efficient way to make deliveries happen for our customers. 
One good example is uh, we developed something that's called dual transaction, which effectively ease uh, some of the congestions at the ports by matching the right equipments with truckers and warehouses and steamship lines and port terminals. That is a process that cannot be done by humans alone. So we assisted that with writing algorithms that find the best matches, which in turn in 2021, we estimated would save about 100,000 um, uh, tons of CO2 just from that pro single product alone. Wow, that's important, especially as I think we're all focused on how do we make the economy and the the world about a lot better place from a uh, from a, you know kind of an ESG perspective. So that's really interesting. I, I want you to look a little bit into the future. If I have, if I say Steve, look out three to five years. Tell me what do you what do you see the innovation in this industry going, and where do you think particularly where does Dre Alliance fit in that innovation profile? I think one important thing for the supply chain and the shipping world, especially ocean shipping and container shipping. Uh, most folks don't know that about 26% of our economy uh, is powered through the ports. It's related, the GDP creation is actually related to products being shipped from the ports uh, in the United States. Um, however, that process today um, is not sustainable anymore. Uh, what we want to see in the next three to five years, what I believe will happen is as, as people and companies realize the need for digitization and integration is to start developing and working with each other on sharing more of the data more easily so that everyone can make better decisions uh, collectively uh, and more efficiently because the entire supply chain is a very complex system. But do you think that the industry will move towards, and maybe it's already has, that level of op openness sharing data? There's so much, at least I feel like there's so many interesting in, in the, individual issues around data privacy, thinking about all of that, is that going to hinder the development of the industry? Or do you kind of see that, you know what, we're going to move towards this kind of landscape, whether we like it or not? I, I think it's the latter, Alton. Um, I, I think it's, it's more of a need, not not one. Um, we simply cannot, we, this current system no longer really works with the physical infrastructure uh, that we have today. So in order to keep up with demand, and, and the future expectation of consumers and businesses. Uh, we unfortunately have to do it. Uh, and we're seeing this effort playing out across uh, nearly all the ports uh, in America. Okay, no, that's, that's interesting because I do think there are obviously big changes that are happening in every industry. Um, last question, because what I also find interesting is, you know, as you think about logistics in this industry, maybe five or six years ago, and maybe even earlier than that, people kind of viewed it as a sleepy industry and like not thinking about how do you disrupt it. There are a lot of people out there, a lot of founders who are thinking about, okay, there are legacy industries that I want to disrupt. You successfully have done that. Talk a little bit about how did you do it? Like give that that person, that founder hope uh, in terms of how to go about the process of disrupting a whole legacy industry that maybe you didn't even have a good background for. I mean, you, you have a, probably a, a much better background than others, but we'd love your insight on that. I, I appreciate that. I, I think I, I would try to give some advices, but I think we're just getting started in, in a huge industry. Um, and what I've learned in the process is um, a lot of these folks have really, really amazing backgrounds. And, and thinking from the perspective of, of solving problems instead of applying existing solutions to problems. Um, and, and one thing I would recommend more people to do is talk to people who have been through this journey. Um, right. People I've learned, founders love helping other founders <laughs> uh, for, for no fee, nothing at all. And because they are problem solvers, they would love to see more people solving bigger problems. And the second thing I would recommend um, for, for folks that are thinking about uh, becoming a founder, uh, especially in a you know, big um, analog industry like, like drayage, like shipping, um, mm -hmm. is pick a big problem and, uh, and an important problem for people to care about. Um, but ultimately, it has to be important for you, for the founder, him or herself. Um, and what often happens when that when, when that dynamic is reached is that um, 
the founder journey is very lonely, it's very hard. But as long as it feels like you are having fun as a founder, it's much easier to get through. Yeah. So uh, that's been my experience. No, that, that's such a good point. I do feel like we've never seen a time where there is the ability to tackle big problems. And the technology is there where you can actually really, as they say, attack it, figure out how do we make changes and really change how we're living our day-to-day -day lives. So it's um it's a very exciting uh, exciting time, and I love those words of inspiration. So hopefully, someone out there listening who is actually identifying really big problems, especially as you said, analog problems, you know, they get the courage to kind of start the journey. Uh, and we uh, we uh, really thank you for those good words. So with that, Steve, I want to thank you for attending our discussion at Tech Trends. We are excited to see what's going to happen with the company and with you, and we look forward to many more conversations in the future. So thank you very much for attending. Thank you, Alton. Really appreciate it. And to our listeners, if you like this episode, remember to rate us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. See you next time. Mm -hmm.